God bless you. I want to thank all of those who came out and joined us for prayer last night. God bless you. And I know those of you who couldn't make it, you were praying with us in the spirit as well. The title of the message this morning is Righteousness Exalts a Nation. Please turn in your Bible to the book of beginnings, Genesis chapter 11. Righteousness Exalts a Nation. While you are turning there, let me also tell you that with a great delight, a certain man, he, bought, he, he went out and he bought his wife a brand new refrigerator. The best that money could buy. Immediately, he began to fill the refrigerator with food. And if his wife suggested that he should plug in the cord into the electrical outlet. He refused. That was his reply. I paid too much money for this thing. Within a couple of days, all the food spoiled. The man became outraged, and he threw the refrigerator out. Life does not work, and humanity cannot be preserved unless it is plugged in to the life source of the kingdom of God. In the book of the beginnings in Genesis, verse chapter 11, beginning with verse 1. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, and that they were found in the plain of the land of Shinar, and they dwelled there. Then they said one to another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come and let us build ourselves a city. Come and let us build ourselves a nation. A tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. Least we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they began to do. Now nothing they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language. That they, may not, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the earth, and they ceased building the city. They ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Baal, because there the Lord confused the language of the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth. In the book of Proverbs 14, verse 34, it says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, these words, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, in a reasonable manner, sensible, prudently, being in self-control, and in full possession of intellectual and emotional faculties. Life simply do not work. Humanity cannot be preserved unless it is plugged into the life source of the kingdom of God. There is nothing you can do more to make God love you more. There is nothing that you can do any less to make God love you any less. His love is unconditional, impartial, everlasting, infinite and perfect. Whenever a nation turns from 
the moral laws of God, whether physical or spiritual, their foundation becomes weakened. And they place themselves under the negative sanctions of God, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28. The values of a nation are never neutral. The values of a nation are never neutral. When we handle our spiritual life casually, we become a casualty to the weakness of our foundation and the world system. Not once in the scripture have we ever been commanded to submit blindly to authority that disobey God's commands. Not once. In the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 19, these words, but Peter and John answered and he said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you judge. A foundational battle is a battle that is capable of troubling a nation, even a righteous nation. Most of our problems in this nation are due to, the, to a faulty foundation, a polluted foundation that cannot carry a divine agenda. There's a problem. I said there's a problem. So the question is, if the foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? What will the righteous do? In Proverbs 29, 2, these words, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked man rules, the people grown. We are commanded to love worship, not warfare. But when it is necessary, we go to war. In Psalms 22, verse 27 and 28, these words, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he governs all nations. And 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1, And it shall come to pass at the return of the year, at the time when kings go out to war. And Ecclesiastics chapter 3, verse 8 says, A time to love, a time to hate, a time to war, and a time of peace. Nations, both spiritual and natural, both spiritual and natural, their destinies make up the people. Their destinies make up the people. The one thing that can change the course of a nation is the strategic positioning of men and women in prayer. The supernatural influence of believers the supernatural influence of believers' prayers play a key role in providing a conduit for the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, for the freedom of the gospel to be revealed in the power of the word. Daniel was faithful in the courts of heaven and in the courts of Babylon, and in both of those places he was faithful. What he heard in the heaven, he spoke in the earth. What God allowed in heaven, Daniel allowed on the earth. When Queen Esther forbid it, what, what, what Queen Esther forbid it in the earth was forbidden in heaven. I want you to understand that principle that Jesus said, whatsoever you bind on this earth will be bound in heaven. What you and I forbid on this earth, regardless where it is, will be forbidden in heaven. Let me read to you from Matthew. These are Jesus' words, Matthew 16, 18, and 19. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. 
Now, after Peter gets a revelation of who Jesus Christ is, Jesus tells him about a building program that he was going to build his church. And then he pronounced war, spiritual warfare, on the gates of hell. And he says, the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. King Solomon said, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. We may think that these truths are self-evident because most Christians do not live their lives as though they were. Most do not ex accept that life is a journey of peaks and valleys, highs and lows, starts and stops, pros and cons, doing and being done. So, some think that spiritual warfare is not necessary. But when Jesus returned to set up his government and his kingdom, his first act, will be to wage war against the nations. That's his first act. The kingdom of God is a literal spiritual realm accessible only to born again believers. In Revelation 19 verse 11 and verse 15 these words, Now I saw an open heaven, and behold a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness. He judges and he makes war. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he shall strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of an almighty God. In his, big, in his biggest challenge as king of Israel, Saul trusted the word of God. Now I want you to hear because it becomes a question. Did Saul trust the word of God? In the biggest challenge of the church, in the age today, will the people of God trust the word of the Lord in this hour. In 1 Samuel, God told the prophet Samuel that the Amalekites had become such an abomination that he needed to cleanse the earth of them and everything they had touched. I know this sounds harsh to our modern 21st century church today. I know it sounds harsh. I know opposition I know that sounds harsh to some, but let me tell you something. The very foundation of the next generation and the generations after that, their very rights, their values, and what they'll be able to have liberty to do is at stake in this hour right now. The enemy will organize a fierce opposition. He will instigate lies snares, and character assassinations against the righteous. This evil spirit seeks to ensnare and destroy lives, careers, marriages, and businesses. We all watch this spirit work on national television in a smear campaign against a Supreme Court a associate judge, a justice, Clarence Thomas, Associate Justice Brent Kavanaugh and newly appointed Associate Justice Amy, Amy Barrett. We watched this smear campaign of righteousness. Their stand for, to live for what's right. It wasn't about what they did, what they were. They smeared their families. They smeared their careers all because they stood for righteousness. And 2 Thessalonians 2.3 says, Let no one deceive you by any means. 
for that day for that day will not come unless there's a falling away first and the man of sin is revealed the son of prediction who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he sits as a God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God in other words what I say is the final word no what God says is the final word. This verse tells us that a time is coming when lawlessness will be given full reign on this earth. And that is what we are up against this day. Some want full reign on this earth. That means that the election process will no longer ever be a democracy. Your right to do so. If some people had full reign, you wouldn't have that constitution right. Up until this point, the church has restrained his work. But now a new, a new dimension of antichrist, a new dimension of the antichrist system is working in the world. We, the church, have been divinely instituted and anointed for the purpose of keeping the earth realm free from, from the aggression and from the agitation and from the advancement of the kingdom of darkness. Spiritual warfare, for all intents and purposes, in, in this presidential election, is a necessary step to bring peace righteousness, and prosperity to the earth because there is no other workable solution in this world today. No other workable solution. We were born again on a battlefield. We were born again on a battlefield, but given a heart of compassion to disciple nations. Our choice to enter into the conflict is not an option. War has already been declared against the righteous. Normal Christianity doesn't have what it takes to move the battle lines. Normal Christianity has, 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 more, has moved further and further from the source of its original power. Normal Christianity has handed down the fruits of faith without its roots. The form without the substance, the shadow without the reality. Normal Christianity has become de domesticated, a domesticated wild animal always in danger of reverting. Our late apostle, Don Lyon, would have never been in this list, and neither are you. Christianity has become a domestic wild animal to some people, and there's always a danger of reverting. Authentic kingdom Christianity is not a domestication, but a regeneration. Not reformation, but a transformation, not the results of social or legal pressure, but the supernatural work of Holy Spirit of the living God. It is the new birth and the new life. Our only choice is whether we will be ruled by the forces of evil or rule over the forces of evil that Christ has already conquered and delivered to us. We are now in the 11th hour of this political rhetoric that is working across partisan lines, promising a new social order. Unity and truth is severely lacking in their promise. Every major political issue at its roots is about discerning truth and having the character to make a righteous decision. 
despite today's dangerous reinterpretation of our history taught in the schoolrooms nationwide, our country, the United States of America, was founded on biblical principles. Our laws originated from scripture standards. Certain facets of our current government are determined to lean further away from our biblical standards. And alone, that alone is alarming to the future of our children. When there is a higher view of God, there is a higher view of man. When there is a lower view of God, man loses his own self-value. Our government is full of those who profess lip service to God, but their hearts are far from him. We cannot and must not be tripped up by the divine, by the divide and conquer strategy as a religious spirit spearheaded by a corrupt media news feed. This is not a Republican or a Democrat issue. This is about listening to Holy Spirit for divine wisdom, revelation, and truth. Receiving direction from any, not receiving direction from any other source but the word of the Lord. That is what is going to lead us out of the chaos that bombards our airwaves, which is why we must specifically pray for the wisdoms in the gate. We need to pray that people that don't lose heart, do not revert back, stand for righteousness, stand in the line, go to the polls, make the right choices. We need Christians to show up, show out, and let God be God in this nation. It is time for us to lift up our voices and align ourselves with the righteous standards that we believe to be true and ask the Lord to release the spirit of justice in this land and release the armies of heaven to restrain the evil forces that stand against us. God is a God of justice and his earthly representatives, we have been empowered. We have been empowered to enforce his justice. Democracy is slow and inefficient. It is slow, but it is the guarantee that the greatest freedom and opportunity for the greatest good is here in America. You don't get 100% sainthood in an election office. Forget it. But you don't get all of the devils either. The answer is not to change the system, but to change the people who run the system. It is our responsibility as the redeemed to take command over demonic spirits that cause decay, delay, deterioration, and to those who would stand against righteousness. I am saying to you that there are people who actually believe the lies they hear on the news feed opposite to the word of the Lord. Their minds have been deceived. By aligning with God's, God's word over the sections, we, we can intercede, we can release his power, and we can decree and declare the justice of God will arise in this nation. Edmund Burke said, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Political apathy in this season would be to re re relinquish our birthright to the powers of darkness. That's what Adam did. For the weapons of our warfare are 
mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing every thought, every idea, every agenda, bringing it into the captivity to the obedience of Christ. We have to walk down the middle of this Bible. We cannot look towards race. We cannot look towards ethnic group. We cannot look towards gender. Born again believers have to walk down to the center of this Bible. It is God's word. Each one of us play a key role in God's end time strategy for his fulfillment in the earth realm. We must develop a growing awareness of God's presence among us. And if we're going to draw from the presence, from his presence, and walk it out, God's given assignment in this earth, we must be aware of the presence of God continuously being with us. Our awareness of God is what determines how we respond to him in a crisis hour. King David said, I put the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. In Psalm 16, 8, David writes that, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. Our strength and courage to do what God has told us to do flows directly from our awareness that God is with us. When we remember who he is and what he has done, the prophetic anointing of our testimony creates the awareness that he is with us now and he is ready to perform his word. We have to get that in our heart, that God made promises to this country called America. He promised us to be with us right here in America. That awareness is a source of our courage and our strength. It is not about doing a supernatural thing at the moment. It's about doing the right thing at the moment. It is not about performing a supernatural thing at the moment. It's about doing the right thing at the moment. It is about seeking his face, humbling ourselves, and pray. We are called to stand in the gap and build a hedge. In Ezekiel 22:30, these words, So I sought for a man among them, who would make a wall stand in the gap before me on the behalf of the nation. God said he is looking for people to stand in the gap and build up a prayer shield on the behalf of the nation that I should not destroy it. But he said, I found no one. Intersection is the universal power of a Christian believer. No power is closed to intercessory prayer. No continent is closed to intercessory prayer. No nation is closed to intercessory prayer. No city, no organization, no candidate, no political office, and no power on this earth can keep the righteous prayers of the believers out. No place. God himself, in the book of Genesis, says, I'm going to come down. They said they were going to build themselves a new nation without God. That is the rhetoric that some is saying today, that we are going to build a new nation without God. They said they're going to build them a tower to the heavens without God. That's what some say. 
But I've got news for you. God saw it and God heard it and God came down. And God himself will come down and institute a cease and desist order against the Babylonian systems. And I want you to notice that their coalition, they had skill, they had talent. They had ingenuity. They had resources. They had equipment. They had some of the best lawyers in the planet. But God came down. And God ordered a cease and desist order. And he scattered them. I am telling you, we're in an hour where God says, if we will seek his face, if we will humble ourselves, and if we will pray, God said, I will come down and I will release a cease and desist order. And if they don't repent, I will scatter them across the nations. This is the hour, brother, sister, this is the hour. This is the hour we will not revert back. We will not step back. We will stand for righteousness. We will lift up our voices. We will call upon the one and true and only God. And we will declare his word. And we will say, let the God who answered by fire, let him be God. Can you say amen? Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet as Pastor Myla come. I want her to release a prayer of righteousness. I want you to get it in your spirit. I want you to get it in your heart. I want you to rise up in your boldness. Man of God, child of God, you tell your neighbor, you tell your children that righteousness will rule and reign in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare, as, as Paul did in 2 Timothy 2, Father, that though he suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. And today, Father, we break off every chain of this world system. We break off, Heavenly Father, every chain that would say, you better not say that, you better not do that. But Lord, as the people of God, we release our declaration. We release the word of God in the name of Jesus that every chain of resistance that would bind this nation, that would try to create a new agenda, that you are broken in the name of Jesus. We break it off this hour. We come into agreement with the men and women, with the churches, with the believers across our nation. And we declare that your kingdom come upon the earth. Your kingdom invade every, every territory, invade every community, invade in the name of Jesus, invade every chain, every strategy that would try to hold us captive, that would try to bind us. But Lord, in Jesus' name, your word is not chained, and we move in declaration we move in the name of Jesus. Father, we break the strategies of the enemy. We break their wisdom, Lord, for it cannot, it cannot supersede the wisdom of God, the truth of God, the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we take authority as you declared over Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. So we take authority and we forbid every dark strategy. We forbid it as the church. Lord, for what you have given us here in this ter territory, we forbid every work of evil upon our land against our constitution and against our nation. We allow the works of the Most High God. We allow angel armies upon the earth to release righteousness in a new dimension. Heavenly Father, for what you are doing by the move of the Holy Spirit as we come into these last days, Lord, we receive it. We don't just receive it, but we live in it. And we step into our calling. We step into our assignment. We step into being an effective voice upon this earth that will declare your righteousness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Praise be to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we take hold of the parable of the persistent widow. 
she would not let go. And if we look at that parable, what we see is we see victory for those that will continue to be persistent. You declared at the end of that parable, when the Son of Man returns, will he find persistence? And so today, as a church, we become persistent, and we declare justice, the justice, Heavenly Father, that you established at the foundation of this nation. There was a justice that was written into our Constitution, a justice that was written into our DNA as a nation, a justice that was written in. And Lord, we declare that justice. We call it to come forth in a new dimension. I thank you for the new men and women that are being elected into office. Office, Lord, across this nation, I thank you for their courage. I thank you for their bravery. But as a church, we declare justice. And we come, Lord Jesus, before every unrighteous judge. We come before every unrighteous uh, uh a political agenda. We come against every unrighteous agenda and we speak justice. Justice in the name of Jesus. Justice over our nation. Justice in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Father. Praise be to your name. Father, we believe you. We put our trust in you. We thank you for what you are doing on the earth. And we trust the work and the move of Holy Spirit. And so, Lord Jesus, as we come into this week, this very important week, Lord, we come with a, a fear of God. A fear of God. You know, sometimes I think when I hear different believers talk about what they believe God would do, and it has absolutely no bearing in the word of God. I always think, do they think when they get to heaven, there's going to be a civil rights council that they get to, um, they get to pass everything? I mean, really? I, 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 because the word of God is clear. And for some of the statements, as Apostle Bird said, the, the, some of the statements that you hear a, a, a dangerous Christian church, and not in the sense of, of, of the righteous danger, I, I think, are, are they reading their word? Are they understanding what the word of God says? The faith center, we do understand what the word of God says. We understand what our assignment is. And we've had some very bold voices in this house. We've lost people because of that boldness. But you're here. And God has raised that boldness in you. It's part of the DNA of this church. So as we go into the years that are coming, we go with the strength and with the courage and with that bold DNA that's been birthed and that's been nurtured in this house for years and years. And we won't step back from our assignment. We will not step back. We always want to give an uh, opportunity for those who need prayer, for those that are coming. Today you come with something that you need prayer for. And so there are prayer teams down front that um, you can come and have prayer with. If there's a place that you, the Holy Spirit's been working and you just want to come and have prayer, I invite you to come down and to kneel at these chairs in the front row. When the Holy Spirit is speaking to us and, and working in our heart, the best thing you can do is mark it by an act of obedience. It's the best thing you can do. So I invite you to come, respond to the words of the Holy Spirit in your heart as we worship. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Father, we praise your name. Glory to you, Jesus. Let's sing it again, Susan. Praise your name. Praise the Father. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise the Father. 
the Spirit. Praise the Spirit, the three in one. Praise to you, O Most High God. Glory. God of majesty. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise forever. Praise forever to the King of Kings. Praise forever to the King of Kings. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father. Lord, we thank you for the word that was imparted into our lives this morning. And Father, we receive, we receive the assignment of this coming year. We receive, Heavenly Father, of the new movement that's coming into the house of God. Each and every one of us have our place. Each and every one of us have that assignment. Lord, we look to your word and we look to all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit increases over the earth, that means the Holy Spirit increases every one of our lives and every one of the gifts that you have given to us in that word so we step up and we receive it Lord we don't just receive it but we live in it and we walk in it Heavenly Father we come into agreement today in prayer for all all of what you are doing in our land this week and Lord we declare that righteousness righteousness will rule in the United States of America righteousness will rule Lord we declare that abortion is being overturned we declare that abortion human trafficking pedophilia it is coming down those thrones are coming down those altars are coming down in the name of Jesus and we go into this week with faith Lord we go into this week with a declaration in our mouth and with the courage that you gave to Joshua in the mighty name Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith family, we love you. Have an amazing remainder of the week. Amen.